This photo may have just won Donald Trump the election. This is one of those once in a lifetime visuals with so much more value than millions of dollars in campaign ads. Even if he doesn't win, the image of Trump defiantly raising his fist to the cameras right after surviving an attempted assassination will go down in the history books. So what do these images say? Trump is the brave martyr who won't be deterred in the face of violent adversity. Trump is the guy who's so anti-establishment and committed to fighting for America's forgotten people that he's being crucified for it. Trump is the victim of a witch hunt, but strong enough to withstand the persecution, even when it proves life-threatening. But also, Trump is human. To survive a horrific incident naturally generates public sympathy, and sympathy is humanizing, even among critics and skeptics. It was clear that even in the chaos of the moment, Trump knew just how powerful an opportunity this would make. He later told the New York Post that a lot of people have deemed this the most iconic photo they've ever seen, and he's probably kind of right. Here's what our senior reporter and former US correspondent Sam Clench had to say. That instantly iconic image of Trump raising his fist with blood smeared across his face, that certainly feeds into the existing dynamic, which is that Joe Biden is old and feeble and Donald Trump was a stronger candidate. Immediately after the attack, news outlets and commentators around the world came out practically calling the election for Trump. Now, sure, prediction markets are fickle, the US election is until November, blah blah blah. But it does suggest that, at least in the short term, the shooting has bolstered public support for Trump. His campaign is banking on the attack inspiring his base to turn out to the polls in droves, and more importantly, increase support among those crucial swing state voters and independents who will now see him through a softer lens. It absolutely energizes his core supporters, and it elevates him further in their minds. He is, in their eyes, the guy who took a bullet for them. MAGA already involved something of a siege mentality, and I think that has certainly been strengthened as a result of this. And, uh, you look, to use the usual metaphor, people will crawl over broken glass to vote for this guy. Some high-profile Republicans have already blamed the attack on Joe Biden and the Democrats. Senator Tim Scott tweeted it was aided and abetted by the radical left and corporate media. And here's Trump's new running mate, J.D. Vance, stating that the Biden administration's portrayal of Trump was directly responsible for the shooting. So where are the Democrats in all this? Immediately after the shooting, the Biden campaign suspended all political communication, including ads attacking Trump. Addressing the incident, Biden urged Americans to reject political violence and keep any disagreements peaceful. Or we may disagree, we are not enemies. We're neighbors, we're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we're our fellow Americans. We must stand together. But now the Democrats could be facing a new problem. When someone's been shot, it's like, how do you respond to that? Anytime the Biden campaign comes out like, don't vote for Trump, he's against democracy, their opponents could now say, once again, they're putting lives at risk. It didn't help that before the assassination attempt, Biden said he would put a bullseye through Trump. It was a, it was a mistake to use, I didn't, mean, I didn't say crosshairs, I meant bullseye, I meant focus on him. Focus on what he's doing. Focus on, on, his, on his policies, focus on the number of lies he told. And let's not forget that Biden was already struggling. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. You can beat President Putin. President Zelensky. His apparent health decline has members of his own administration in a panic. He's facing growing pressure to step down, and every public gaffe has made headline after headline after headline. The way the Trump campaign will frame this election is as a battle between Joe Biden, senile old man, stumbles on his words, can't remember the name of his vice president, and Donald Trump, the strong man who was literally straight back on his feet after being shot by an assassin. Look, it always feels a little bit dirty to discuss the political impact of an event like this, but that is what both campaigns will be doing at the moment. I feel like people's impressions of Trump and Biden are pretty indelible at this point. Um, so with that in mind, the effect might be a little bit smaller than you would think. How Trump conducts himself going forward could prove crucial. If he starts spouting divisive language, it could be a turnoff for undecided voters. And perhaps he already knows this. In his first social media post since the attack, he extended his condolences to the family of the rally goer who was killed and thanked security officials who protected him. Trump is about as responsible as anyone else for an uptick in violent rhetoric politically in the US this past decade, so. I suppose it is possible that an event like this will feed into people's existing fears about him as a candidate as well. Again, anything could happen between now and November. But regardless of whether he wins or loses the election, the image of Trump with his fist to the camera will live on forever.